All right. Okay. All right, so we are live. Thank you so much for everyone for joining. We're gonna talk about places that you must visit in our respective countries. Um, and I'm gonna share the URL with everyone so people, if they wanna share it. Um, right, so we are live. Oh, Thank you so much me... for everyone for joining. Okay. So now it's 20 seconds behind, so you just heard that, so I muted that. And I'm going to just, um, so thank you for everyone for joining. Um, again, Michelle here, Dreaming English, and we have Isabel from Spain. We have Ken from UK. We have Julio from Bolivia. We have Yuri from Kazakhstan. And so we are going to um, talk about places to visit. And um, I'm just going to share with the people in my old URL because I had to fix this new URL. Um, I'm still learning YouTube live and I had it all set up with a pre-made URL and it wasn't working. So, all right. So who would like to go first um, to talk about places to visit? Okay. okay. Well, I could start. Okay. <laughs> But I have okay, to share absolutely. The um, you should let me just make sure that I, multiple people can share screen, so you should be able to share your screen. Okay. Okay. Oh, sorry. Very sorry. <laughs> okay. So Bolivia is in South America. Uh, it's a big country. Um, more than a million kilometers square. Um, Julio, I don't want to interrupt you, but I, it's, I think you have um, really slow internet because I keep on seeing Julio has started screen sharing. Oh, oh, okay, 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 sorry. So maybe I'm going to turn off my camera. Okay, is it better? Okay, you... so I see your desktop. Do you want to open up what you're going to share with us? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, well, okay, actually, here you go. I... Go ahead, get started now. Okay, okay. So can you see yes. the map? Oh, okay, okay. So Bolivia is in South America, the country with uh, highlands, lowlands. So this would be the, the part of highlands, uh, many mountains, cold weather. We have this, uh, we call these ladies cholitas. They're uh, people from highlands. They are climbing a mountain. And here we have them uh, playing soccer at an altitude of uh, Six uh, uh, thousand meters above sea level. Mm -hmm. Okay, we also have valleys. This is uh, the famous uh, Dead Road. And we have the lowlands, a lot of flora, fauna, wild animals weather. Uh, according to our last constitution, we have like 36 uh, nationalities, uh, many cultures uh, living in one country, right? This is the famous uh, Carnival of Oruro. And this is the Salar uh, the uni, this is salt. Okay. I watched so, um, videos, I don't want to interrupt you, but I watched videos from Lucito on all that salt that you just showed in that last picture. So I just wanted to mention that. Yeah, 
Yeah, yeah. I, I actually have a, a picture of where's okay, no, it's not here. I had one with Luisito. He yeah, actually uh, Luisito Comunica, uh, Luisito is a famous uh, YouTuber, right? Uh, he was here in Bolivia um, like for, uh, yeah, I guess he was here uh, like four times at least. And he showed uh, a lot of places to visit in Bolivia. So if you're interested, you can take a look, right? You can check it out uh, at Luisitos Comunica channel. Okay, that's um, all that I wanted to show a little bit of my country. Okay, thank you. Um, I guess I can go next, um, unless anyone else wants to go next. Let me just get my photos up. I'm going to share San Francisco, um, where I actually went there. I went there. It's hard to remember things now because of all this COVID, but it was 2019. It was the summer of 2019. <clears throat> and I went there for a conference, so I didn't get to see a lot. I've also been there years and years ago when I used to work at another company and I visited Alcatraz, but the pictures that I'm going to share with you today are from the Fisherman's Dock. Um, I have, let me just close out this info. Um, some pictures from the Fisherman's Dock. I love San Francisco. I super would love to go back there and spend more time. Going there for a conference, I was only able to go out after 5 p.m. And I was very surprised. In July, everything closed. All the museums closed. But all the restaurants like and all of the shops and stuff were closing by 8 p.m. So I was a little disappointed that I really couldn't go to museums then because I was only there, I was in the conference eight to five. But I wanna share with you pictures that I took from San Francisco. Um, I think a must see place to go. It's very expensive, unfortunately, uh, but it's so beautiful, this Golden Gate Bridge. Um, and a little bit about the Golden Gate Bridge. <coughs> so it is, 4,200 feet and let's see I think I can go into this so this is just one of the cables so you see the cables here one cable uh -huh. has has like um, 27,572 cables little cables in each of these big cables right um, so I thought that was pretty cool um, and then I have a few things that I wanted to read to you about about the, um, uh, let me just look through. Um, I'm definitely going to have to get a Flickr account like Ken Clay because he said that the Flickr account, you can put these in order. So here is um, something kind of like, I guess it's a bridge that a lot of people try to commit suicide on. So they have put in this barrier here, but you know, that's not the nicest thing to really think about. But I do want to share some other pictures so this this bridge was made in one year and you know my daughter just noticed this they didn't bother to change the cloud she's like oh look at the same as that clouds but 1935 to 1936 that was when they they built this bridge all in one year um so i thought that was pretty cool mm -hmm. and um a little bit about the the bridge or things to visit now Alcatraz, I had visited many years ago, but I don't have any pictures from it. Alcatraz was this island, which is kind of famous. Um, there's some movie about it. I, I can't remember the famous actors are in it, but it's Escape from Alcatraz um, because they did have some people that tried to escape. We don't know if they ever survived, but Alcatraz was this whole, like this island, and it's not that far. You can see it from the Golden Gate Bridge, but the waters that are, in the San Francisco Bay are like super cold and have really strong currents. So to escape from it would be like really difficult. Um, a little other brief history is that um, the American Native Americans actually occupied it and claimed it as, as Native American land. Um, it says um, American Indians, as we know that the Native Americans here were called Indians for a really long time because I don't know, Columbus thought he found India. But in any case, they, they um, 
kept it from 1969 to 1971 and kind of like lived there and said this is our land because like we had so much land stolen from us. Um, but any case, it was a prison for 60 years um, and a pretty harsh prison. I, I watched the movie, but I had a hard time watching it because I, I find that like I don't really, I don't like prisons. <laughs> So any case, but that's a place you can go and visit. You can go for a tour. Um, and underneath San Francisco Bridge is a fort. And let me see if I can find some pictures of that for you. Um, it's just so gorgeous. I, I ended up taking, I, I took a trolley there. No, I didn't take a trolley over there. I took a bus. I took a trolley and then took a bus. I actually just went around by myself because all my coworkers wanted to go to a baseball game. And I thought, well, why would you go to a baseball game when you're in San Francisco when there's so many other things to see? Mm -hmm. um, so I went to San Francisco and I'm trying to find pictures of, I thought I had pictures of the fort, but there's a fort underneath the bridge. And... Um, here's the fort. So this fort was built um, super long time ago, but during World War II, it was used to kind of like really protect the San Francisco Bay. There never was any um, any times that we were having invaders come there, but apparently it was really thought to be a key place to protect the San Francisco Bay. Um, so there's this fort underneath the bridge and a little bit of information about it. It was built in the 1850s and the U.S. Army ranked it, um, ranked this um, exposed area, windy, beaten area, as an ideal place for fortification to defend the San Francisco base. Mm -hmm. The Civil War era fort was never faced enemy fire, but, um, but is now under attack by raising sea levels. And you can see right here <coughs> that because of global warming, the sea levels are rising, so it's actually being now under attack by water. So share that with you and then so that you can see actually in this picture to the fort underneath and the park you can walk all the way underneath here you can start somewhere over here and you can walk there's lovely little paths there um so that's where i spent like an afternoon or actually an evening in july of 2019 other things to see there's tons of museums and stuff uh, but I would say the trolley cars, which I just paid, I don't know what I paid, but I think I paid like $25 for a pass that you could use for three days. And I just rode the trolley cars. And you can see um, this particular video, oh, that's kind of loud, I'm gonna mute that. But the trolley cars are pretty cool. They have a brake man, um, this guy's the brake man. So he's, it's one of the hilliest cities in the United States, probably the most hilliest. So he's got to be really working the brakes when it's going down. And I just thought it was really cool to ride around, especially the hilliest um, streets in San Francisco. And I just did that for like one evening. And then the other evening I was there, I ended up spending a lot of time going to, um, to Golden Gate Bridge. And this, um, this street is this zigzag street. Um, let me see if I can show you a picture. It's this famous street that um, it's very beautiful, but it's like this crazy zigzag street. Mm -hmm. um, I can't remember the name of it, actually, but it's in San Francisco. People live on it. And it's just like the zigzags are all like beautiful flowers. But because it's such a crazy hill, it zigzags, you know, up and down the street. So... Um, that's really must see thing in San Francisco. There are tons of museums, but unfortunately that time I really wasn't able to go to any museums because of the fact that I was at the conference. Um, so does anybody have any questions um, about San Francisco that I can answer? I definitely want to go back there. I, I think if you were like, you know, one place like you could go to, you could go to Disney World, you could go to different places, but this is a, I think, much more interesting than that, in my opinion. So if you, if we go to San Francisco, are we Francisco, going to be able to, to visit Alcatraz prison? 
you know, I do. I don't know if it's open now, but it might be open. I think reservations, <coughs> excuse me, reservations are probably a must right now because of the whole, um, you know, COVID situation. When I went there, I went to the Alcatraz prison. I think it was before my daughter was born and my son was, so I think it was like 2010 or no, two, she was born in 2009. No, I'm sorry. It was like 2007. I went there and you could just go and buy tickets. But I think now if you want to go to the museums, reservations are a must um, for the, the museums. Um, but the museums are open now. You can get go to the museums. Um, some of them you don't need reservations. I think it depends. Like right now, you probably absolutely need, need reservations or it might not be open. But in the summer months, because a lot of the prison is like open air. So it's not as, um, you know, there's parts of the tour that's inside for sure. But I would say that you should try to get reservations to see that. And any museums, I think, too, you probably would want to have reservations for. Okay, thank you. All right. Go ahead. Do you have a question or something? Um, Ken Clay, you were saying? I don't know if you were. Actually, I'm, I'm having been up because I've been to the prison as well. Oh, you've been to the prison? Do you want to sit, share a little bit about it? Well, um, I would have been. And obviously fell into some kind of disrepair restored back to original but it is very sobering when you see it seems like your internet's a little bit a little bit um not great right now Ken. seems like you're cutting out um so let's see britman of alcatraz you were sharing um, was a famous film, was the famous film used to film it? Like, who was it? It was um, one of the really famous actors that played, was it Clint Eastwood, Eastwood or something? Eastwood. Yes, Clint Eastwood. Eastwood. Um, yeah, no. that, no, not no. Clint Eastwood? Well, Somebody that looks know. like Clint Eastwood was in that movie. Well, in any case, there was a movie about Escape from Alcatraz, um, and I watched it after going to Alcatraz. Um, it's a really good movie. Um, someone, yeah, whoever yeah. it is, is in it. It looks like Clint Eastwood, but maybe it's not. Yeah. But in the any main, case... The main actor was uh, Clint Eastwood. Was Clint Eastwood, right? I thought so. So, yeah, it was a um, really good movie, but I, I have to say, part of, my, I, part of my job, just to share... I work in a high school and sometimes I have to go on field trips to prisons because our mm -hmm. students are like, maybe our students want to study criminal justice. And I found that I don't like to go into prisons. So I don't know why I want to go a tour to Alcatraz. Um, I do not like prisons. I don't want to go on a tour. I told my boss, I'd rather not be the person that goes on the field trips anymore. <laughs> and she told me I don't have to. So, uh, but any case, um, yeah, it was fun. I, I definitely would like to go back. Super expensive. I think it's probably one of the most expensive um, places, unfortunately. Um, but I think it's so beautiful. I thought um, I would share that. And maybe we can do this again sometime and I'll share other places. But I just thought the Golden Gate Bridge, I could, and that was, Golden Gate Bridge was free for the most part. Um, just getting there by trolley and bus. So that was, that was an expensive. I think what's expensive is the hotels. The hotels are super, super expensive. But I'll tell you, when I went there for my work in 2007 or 8, whenever I went there, I did not stay in San Francisco. I stayed in Walnut Creek because San Francisco is so expensive. But the job I have right now, when we have conferences, we have to have super big hotels because our, our um, organization is over um, 47 states. So we need to have huge conference centers. So I got to actually stay in San Francisco the last time, which was really nice. Is it in Morris? even more expensive than New York? I would say it's probably comparable as expensive. I like it better than New York City. I mean, there's a lot to see in New York City, but it's very crowded in New York City. I'd say San Francisco feels very safe. It's very open. Um, I, I, would, I like San Francisco better. There's awesome things to see in New York City, like Empire State Building, Ellis Island, Statue of Liberty. 
but I don't like the crowds. I feel like it's super crowded in New York City. Mm -hmm. All right, so who would like to go next? Okay, I would like to start. Okay, so I will get your pictures. One moment while I, I open. I, um, wait a moment. I, I'm going to share my... Okay, you can share. My, my screen, you know? Okay, you can do that. It is It is going to be my first time, so I hope it, it, if it works or not. If not, I can do that. Okay. Can you see my, my screen or not? Oh, wait. No, not yet. It's coming. Okay, so now if you just... If you just open one of the pictures and then you can just hit a little arrow. Yes, perfect. Perfect? Yeah. Okay, the, um, first of all, I am going to, to tell all of, all of you that I'm from Spain. Uh, my, my country is located in the south of Europe. Uh, it, it's, it, it's been very difficult to choose one place to, to share with, with you because we have many, many places that you can visit here. But one of my favorite is the Alhambra. Uh, it is in Granada, in the south of Spain, okay? Uh, it is one of the most visited monuments, mm, not even in Andalusia, but also in, in Spain, you know? And um, it is also called Red Pal Palace, okay? Uh, it was named UNESCO World Heritage. Do you know what I might, what, what I mean with that? Or not? No. Okay, that it is a place that must be uh, visited. Um, oh, right. Okay, um, be uh, careful with, with, with this place, you know, that you have to preserve. The, and it, it consists of three parts um, because it, 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 is, it covers more than 140,000 140, square meters, okay? Um, it consists of the narrowest palaces, that it was a former palace of the Sultan, the Generalife, the Generalife that it used to be the sultan's sultans or summer residence because uh, I, I, for, I forgotten to tell you that it was built by Moorish, you know, by Moorish rulers. And it, 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 this palace was um, used like a summer residence for, for them, okay? And there are, they generally feel that there are a big garden and you can walk around and, and enjoy the flowers and there are basins and fountains. So it's very, very nice. But if you want to have a nice view, okay, there are a lot of, uh, I don't know how to say that, miradors, miradors, okay, to enjoy the views over the city and the Alhambra, okay. And of course, Sierra Nevada that it is just in the background of this palace, okay? And my favorite is San Nicolas Mirador. It is located in the Albaicin Al neighborhood. Wait a moment. This is the, the neighborhood that I'm, I'm mm, telling you, you, you know? And from there, you can have a, nice view of the Alhambra and Sierra Nevada. And there you can also find uh, the Sacro Monte. The Sacro Monte neighborhood, it is very particular because uh, there are a lot of caves, you know, but right now you, you can see there uh, some flamenco dances that it was typical of gypsy, okay? And it is very, very nice. The city is, visited it is visited for a lot of people for many for many cultures but it has a, a good um, university so many 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 people from all 
over the world go there to, to study and to be there because the atmosphere is really, really nice. Apart from that, it, you can go around the city because you have some tapas, uh, free tapas, you know, that you can enjoy and taste all the cuisine that is very different because, you know, you can find a mix, a mix of cuisines because they were in, in, invited, invited for Greeks, Romans. So it's, it, it is my favorite city, okay? Can you, can you hear me? Yes. This is Sierra Nevada. Rochelle, you are muted. This oh, yeah, Nevada. sorry. I muted myself, but yes, we can hear you. This is Sierra Nevada, okay? You can go there and ski if you if you like. And this is the Sacromonte and the Cuevas, the place where people go to to enjoy the shows of flamenco, okay? And this is one of the most uh, typical food there, jamón serrano de Trevelet, okay? It is very particular because it is cured there because they have a special uh, uh, weather. It is very dry and cold, perfect to cure this, this food, you know? Um, and you know, I have a sweet taste and you can go there and try remojón granadino. You can ask, you, ask yourself what is Remojón. So remojón is soak, and it is soak with orange juice and mm, olive oil. You know, but a special olive oil mm, that grow that it is made there. That it is like a, a spicy taste. You know that uh, when you try this this olive oil, uh, you can feel you can feel it at the at the back of your tongue. You know. And it is mm, very particular, very peculiar, okay? So this is the Alhambra, okay? And this is another view of Alhambra, wait a moment. You know, this is Granada at the background and this is the Alhambra. It is very, very beautiful, amazing. And right now I'm going to talk about something or some place uh, out of the beaten track, you know, and it is the cathedral, the, the cathedral beach. It is in the north of Spain, in Ribadeo. It is in Galicia, but in the border with the community of, uh, of Astur Asturias, okay? I'm going to show uh, a video. Muchísimo más graciosa. Wait a moment, this is the, the public. Okay. It is in Spanish, but I I only I want you to see the how is the, the beach. se encuentran reunidos los majestuosos arcos de piedra, arcos ocultos por la sal que los rodea. Florecen cada día al alejarse su único compañero salado. Monumento natural es proclamado por fantástico lugar hallado, cuyo nombre origen es 
aguas santas. Its real name is Aguas Santas, but because of the structure of the of the mountains and the cliffs, it is called Cathedral Beach. It is super beautiful. I'll definitely have to put it in my places to visit. We have we have places like that I've never been, but in Maine, like uh, upstate Maine. There are beaches that have those type of like rock formations. Nos hace saber que podremos bajar. Cuando Mahamar nos hallemos, podremos caminar entre el majestuoso paisaje elaborado por la fuerza del mar. It's a natural monument. As you can see, with a natural super dimension. Arena fina se entrelaza nuestros okay. dedos durante más de un kilómetro de longitud. Laberinto. The sand is very soft. Mm -hmm. So you can take off your shoes and start walking. And you will feel like in the seven air and in the seven heaven. How how is the water? Is it like warm or Very cold, cold because it, it is in the Atlantic Ocean. Oh, okay. In fact, in the Cantabric Sea, you know. So the, the, the waters are really cold. Same thing with our beaches here. <laughs> Sus gigantes se enfrentaron you know? y salieron heridos. Sus cuevas guardan sentimientos. Es una visión de arcos, con 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 arcos, con
book in advance to go there and your ticket and then you can you can visit the this place we have somebody asking when's the last time have you been there and i think that it was six years ago okay six years ago because my brother and decided to to visit the the place uh the place and uh, it was a surprise for me because sometimes we don't we we don't realize the, the the treasures that we have in our own country until you go and visit them and in the north of spain we have many many of them that they are out of the beaten track and that it is it, they deserve a visit they worth a visit Absolutely, it's beautiful. All right, is that all you have? Do you have any more? Um, okay. No, no more. All right, I, we just had Fatima join, and we have. Um, so, who would like to go next? I can go next if my internet stays stable. I'll come off. Okay. Do you want me to share the pictures? I have the link, or do you want to? Yeah, no, you you can. Okay. You can. All right. Okay. Can everybody see the screen? Yes. Yep. Okay. So where do you want me to start from the first one? Yeah, first picture. Okay. Uh, this is uh, Tynemouth Beach, so it's at the edge or the, 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 the mouth of the Tyne, which is why it's called Tyne Mouth. And that is one of the two piers which protects um, the, the river as it goes out to sea. Next picture, please. Uh, this is the very edge of the pier, as you can see. Mm -hmm. It's quite a long pier. It's, it, I think it's about a kilometre long, so it's a uh, point eight of a mile long, something like that, to walk out. And obviously there is, there is an opposite pier on the other side of the river. Next photograph, please. Okay, where is it located? It's in the northeast of England. I should have said this. So the, the, the images I'm going to be showing today are on the east coast of England over to the west coast of England on the Scottish border. Mm -hmm. So it is two counties. It is Northumberland and um, Cumbria. Um, so this is looking from the pier back into land. At the very top, you can see something called the Priory. Next picture, please. This is the Priory, the remains of the Priory. It dates back to about 1500 approximately. It's, uh, it's in ruins now, um, but it's still... I mean, a lot of old castles and priories and churches are in ruins from this era because of um, our history and um, Henry VIII and the the way that the Church of England broke away from the Catholic Church. But um, this is the one, of the one of the pictures of the remains of the priory in Tynemouth. Next picture, please. Just an image within the Priory, just looking at some of the, the ruined walls. Next picture, please. Uh, this is um, St. Mary's Island, St. Mary's Lighthouse. It's only a few hundred yards or a few hundred metres offshore. Um, and when the tide comes up, it obviously becomes an island. Um, nobody lives there now. It's an automated island. I think there might be, there are guards on every day. Or there are people there for tourists when they come across to um, to have a look at the island. It's very small. I mean, it is tiny. It's three or four buildings and obviously the, uh, the lighthouse. Next image, please. And this is just in one of the little filling bit fishing villages. Uh, there are quite a few small fishing villages um, all the way up the coast, of course. Um, normally, they only go out a couple of miles or a few kilometres out into sea to, uh, to fish for um, all kinds of bits and pieces. I, I know they fish for all sorts up there, but 
Next image, please. Uh, some housing on one of the beaches, um, again, taken on one of the, next to one of the villages along the seaside, going up towards Scotland. Uh, lots of sand dunes, some amazing beaches up this part of the world. Again, stunning sand, just don't have the weather. Um, it's uh, very, quite rugged, quite barren in places, but stunning part of the world just to walk along the beaches and see some of the many castles and historical buildings which litter this part of the northeast. Next picture, please. Ah, right. We are now in Newcastle itself, or Newcastle, as we would say. So mm -hmm. this is a look down the river. There are seven bridges within one mile, which mm -hmm. is 1.6 kilometres. So I think in the UK, it's the most bridges in one mile. And obviously, this bridge might look very, very familiar. Anybody got any ideas? London bridges? Nope, another nope. country completely. Sydney Bridge, Australia. Australia, ah, uh, okay. Right, mm -hmm. now they were, both bridges were designed by the same people and they were both built around the same time. But this bridge, the Tyne Bridge, which is the iconic bridge of Newcastle, um, was built within about two years. The mm -hmm. Sydney Bridge, took about eight years to build and is much, much bigger. But if you look at the two bridges, you can see that they came from the same set of architects. Mm -hmm. So that's the famous bridge. There are several other bridges and there've been a couple of other bridges built in the last couple of years, which are designed for pedestrians. You will find a couple of other images of the bridge and the river. If you could go through those, Rochelle. Slow. Mm -hmm. So, in its day, the Northeast was famous for shipbuilding. Mm -hmm. um, that's all gone now, so there is no shipbuilding left. Uh, and up until the last 10, 15 years, the dock area and the area down beside the river had become quite abandoned, but it's all gone up our market now with some very nice hotels some great restaurants and bars. So it's a kind of, it's, it's a very um, well visited place by, by locals now um, going out to eat and drink along the river. Uh, and obviously I love rivers at night in cities because of the reflection. So it's, it's an amazing place to be. Next picture, please. Uh, right, so we've come inland a little bit here. It's just a general overview of the very barren a landscape that uh, there is between um, the east coast and the west coast. Um, there's a small farmhouse here. Next picture, please. This is a fragment of the Roman wall, which stretches from east to west. So this stretches from a place called Wall's End, quite aptly named, the end of the wall, Wall's End, which then goes all across country to the west coast through Cumbria. And this was built in the era of Hadrian, which is why it has developed its name Hadrian's Wall. It was an impressive fortification in its day to keep the Scots out of England. So this is just a fragment. In, in places, it's very well preserved. In other places, it's just fragments like this. Next picture, please. Ah, right, so again, you can see how rugged this is. Along the top of that craggy escarpment is where the, where the wall actually goes. So they used the cliff face, the rock face, as part of the natural defences, along with a small um, lake, which you can see in the background. And they are some of the very hardy sheep, one of the few things which can survive in this area. You can't grow any crops. Uh, the only thing which really uh, farmers can deal with are sheep. Mm -hmm. Next picture, please. Again, just a general overview of the countryside around there. 
This was shot in early January, so a little bit of snow on the mountains, not a lot, just a little bit of snow. I call them mountains. They're small hills. I mean, Britain really doesn't have mountains in the same way that Spain does or the US. These are hills. These are hills. They're tiny little hills. But for us, they are our mountains. Next picture, please. Ah, Anak Castle. Um, again, like Spain and quite a lot of Europe, um, Britain is littered with castles. And this is a very famous castle. It's used, it has been used on quite a lot of films. Uh, so films about King Arthur, um, uh, Robin Hood, films about Robin Hood, and most recently, some of the Harry Potter films have been shot up in the Northeast in, uh, in many of the castles. Um, so this is a fragment of one of those castles. Next picture, please. So there's just another shot of the entrance to the castle. Again, this castle dates back to about, ooh, a castle. It's got to be about 800 year old, something like that. Next picture, please. Ah, um, this is one of the villages um, up in Northumberland, approaching the um, the Cumbrian the Cumbrian border. Um, they're quite typical in terms of the stone, um, quite damp places, quite wet because of where they are. So it's just a general shot of um, one of the streets, one of the old market towns. Next picture, please. Ah, again, one, another shot of one of the other castles. Um, you might be able to see that it's, it's been built and rebuilt over the centuries. Again, this castle goes back to the 14th, 15th century. Uh, great use of local stone. And with this particular castle, unfortunately, I don't have an overview, Bambra Castle. It's built again on a rocky outcrop uh, next to the sea. Next picture, please. And just again, another shot with a very modern and very um, iconic uh, British red telephone box with the castle in the background. Next picture, please. Ah, that's a far better picture of this castle. As you can see, it's built on a, a rocky outcrop and just the other side is the sea. So it was there to help defend against the invading Nordic um, pie, uh, countries. So yeah. Next picture, please. Again, one of the other stately homes, stroke castles um, within the countryside. Next picture, please. Just another, a, a tighter shot. This is, this is probably more of a stately home, but as you can see, it, it, it has leanings towards wanting to look like a castle with the uh, the castellations with the defensive look, although it isn't a castle, it is actually a stately home. So it was once owned by somebody with a lot of money. This is probably about 17th century. Next mm -hmm. picture, please. Ah, Standing Stones. Again, this is in Northumberland stroke Cumbria. Um, again, like a lot of Europe, Britain has a lot of standing stones, a lot of... Um, Stones which were placed there by ancient man. Nobody quite knows how far they date back, but um, a good couple of thousand years minimum. There should be another couple of pictures of the standing stones. So another one, please. This gives a sense on this panoramic photograph of how many standing stones there are and the kind of countryside around. Again, um, I'm going to call it mountainous. You'd probably call it slightly, slightly hilly, slightly hilly, <laughs> slightly hilly. Slightly hilly. That's like Massachusetts. Slightly, <laughs> slightly hilly. Next picture, please. Again, just a sort of general shot of the countryside so people get an idea as to how barren a lot of this area is. It's You can't really grow a lot of crops, and if they are, they're, they're quite limited. Next picture, please. 
Again, next picture, please. It's just some, some general, couple of general shots there of what this countryside looks like. So there's a farm gate and obviously um, more hills in the background. Next picture, please. Again, just a, a, a panoramic view of the countryside. This is slightly up towards the Scottish border, but all of that countryside is very, I'm not going to say samey, but it has a very similar outlook in terms of it's quite it's quite rugged, it's quite open, no real forests as such because trees really can't survive that well. So it's lots of heather, just open gorse land. So next picture, please. Again, next picture, please. So a lot of sheep again, same, same thing. Uh, right, so we're coming across um, one of the passes which leads through from Northumberland into Cumbria. And uh, this at one point was a slate mine. So they used to mine slate, um, mostly for roofing, but uh, also other bits and pieces. There are about three or four little photographs of this area of this um, Next picture, please. So as you can see, slate in the foreground and uh, the mountains either side. Next picture, please. There's a huge chunk of slate on um, on a little, I don't know what you call it, a little boogie of some kind, a little train. A little train car, car. Yeah, something. yeah, I'm not quite sure. I don't technically know what the word is, but yeah. Slate was mined for, for a good couple of hundred years. And you can see all of the slate where they've mined it, all the rubbish, which has been left behind, which is now absolutely part of the scenery. Next picture, please. Again, just another overview of the valley. Next picture, please. Now, this road, you can see in the bottom of the picture, is, um, is only just wide enough for one car which is not uncommon of many of the roads in this part of the world. Um, in the UK, generally in the countryside, um, roads are probably quite often only passable by one car. And then we have passing points every few hundred yards. So you have to give way back up um, or give way to bigger vehicles. Yeah. Yeah. Next picture, please. Okay, now, so we're now into Cumbria. We're now into the Lake District, which is one of the big tourist attractions. So there are quite a few lakes in the Lake District um, and very popular with tourists. So when you're ready, next picture, please. Yeah, there are just several shots of the Lake District as to how pretty it is. Like I say, it's a huge tourist attraction, not just for British people, but for, for people from around the world. Um, next picture, please. So you can go on quite a few cruises up and down some of the, uh, the lakes. Um, some of these boats are steamboats and they date back sort of a hundred years and they, uh, they, they're basically used as tourist boats now. Next picture, please. Yeah, if you, I'll just get you to go through four or five of the photographs. It's sort of four or five second intervals. So just, these are just general pretties of this part of the world. Next picture, please. This area now very much lives on tourism and farming is important, but again, uh, tourism brings in a lot of money. Obviously, prior to COVID, um, what the situation is now, I don't know. That's just some oars in one of the boats. Next picture, please. Again, just some general overviews. I, I think um, Isabel will recognise kind of the sense of this landscape because it is kind of quite like northern Spain as well. It, yes. it has a very similar feel. It's wet, mm -hmm. very green, it's mountainous. Mm -hmm. You could almost transplant yourself there and think we could be in the same place because of the similarity in mm -hmm. the landscape. Next picture, please. Again, you can see how much boats are part of this. It is part of the tourist industry, these, 
these small boats. Next picture, please. Bit of an overview. And next picture, please. That's so beautiful. Yeah, you're going to find another couple of these. And then we should be on to Beamish Museum. Again, next picture, please. Tourist. Beautiful, clear water. It's very deep, very clear. Again, just a sense of the countryside. Again, lots of sheep. The only thing which can really survive, which farmers can, uh, can make any money on the sheep up there. Next picture, please. I think this should be the last of the lakes pictures. Ah, right, okay. So we are now into Beamish Museum, which is in Northumberland, sort of Northumberland, yeah, County Durham borders. And the photographs coming up next are of a living museum. So they literally, what they have done is if a building was being has been designed has been designated to be demolished and it was of historical interest, the museum would literally, brick by brick, remove the building, painstakingly remove the building, and then rebuild the building. So you can just very gently, every three or four seconds, push through the photographs, please. So this is a fish and chip shop, which is super popular. Really nice fish and chips. There's a tin bath where you used to have a bath as a child. When I was a child, um, mm -hmm. there was no indoor um, bathroom in our house. It was condemned a couple of years after, um, after we left it. Next picture, please. So again, just a, um, a tin sign for lion's tea. Next picture, please. So there's a steam train, and this is a this is a, a running steam train. So these things come out of the sheds every day and are run on railway lines. Like I said, this whole museum is a living museum. Next picture, please. So you can you can ride on old buses, old trams, on mm -hmm. old uh, trolley buses, and they will take you around the site, which is quite big. So it's set in the countryside and they have little areas which are designed to look like or feel like villages or areas of a particular age. Next picture, please. Now some coal. Next picture, please. Look at the shovel. <laughs> so this is, again, this is a, a reconstruction of Robert Stevenson's rocket. And this thing runs up and down. It's only a few hundred yards but it takes passengers up and down the few hundred yards within the museum. And as you can see, the guys on the footplate are dressed as they would have been in the era. Is that the first yeah. steam train, right? Yeah. Obviously, it's a replica to where... Uh... Replica. <laughs> my, my son loved trains, and we read about that one when he yeah. was a kid. So next picture, please. So this is a church which has been... Um, dismantled and then rebuilt back in the village. So it's quite a large place. I mean, it's a good day to go around this village. It's absolutely fantastic to do it. You get on a nice day, it's beautiful. Next picture, please. From about, that's probably about 14th century church by the it's looks of it. Um, this is inside of one of the, the houses. Next picture, please. Right, so what you have is you have people who are actually working in the houses they're making bread, they're cooking, and you can talk to them and they explain exactly what's going on. So this is what I mean by a living museum. There are actually people there living the way they would have in those days. So all these people know about what they're doing and they, do, they, they demonstrate um, making bread or cooking um, dishes typical of that era. Next picture, please. And they sit, you know, they'll sit and talk to you. And um, you gain a lot of experience from these people. They're very knowledgeable, they've got a lot of experience, um, a lot of um, time taken to get things right. So they dress in the period as well. Next picture, please. So just, you know, typical furniture. The houses are absolutely um, 
furnished the way they would have been in their era. And these are not rich people's houses. These are working people's houses. These are um, shops which would have been there in the era. Next picture, please. So there is a bath. That is a steel bath in the, <laughs> uh, under the window. Uh, and I'm not quite sure what the wicker basket is, but isn't it beautiful? Amazing shape. So next picture, please. I said bath or bath, depending upon where you come from. Um, so this, again, is an office, and it is literally done out the way it would have been 1850. So with a little printing press in the background, oil lamps, and they're actually lit by oil lamps. So next picture, please. And this is in the chemist's house. And you can see there's a fire roaring in the background. So you, you're literally stepping back 150, 200, 300 years ago and getting a sense and a flavor and quite often a, a smell of what these houses and these buildings would have been like. Next picture, please. We have some of those here in the US, like in Massachusetts, we have a couple Plymouth Plantation and Sturbridge Village and like, Speckled throughout the United States, I think we have a number of these living museums. I, like yeah. them. I think they're a great idea because they really do bring history to life. Too many museums are, you know, everything's just static, but these, you know, they really bring things to life. And when you've got people working there who are really passionate about telling history, it's great because you really do get a sense. I mean, if you go into the school and you make a noise, the teacher shouts at you. And it's, it's quite shocking initially. <laughs> it's, um, you know, you kind of go, oh, my God, you know, I'm paying to be here and you're being shouted at. But it's actually quite good fun because that's the way schools would have been. Next picture, please. So this is one of the streets. I mean, literally, there are streets. And all of these buildings are genuine from the era, but have been dismantled and put back together. So we have trolley buses. So you can just walk around and jump on a trolley bus and just get to another part of the village. Next picture, please. Again, just an, another shot of the street from another angle. You can see there are pubs. There are little, um, well, not restaurants per se, but you know there were places selling food the way it would have been sold in the day, bread, um, pharmacies and all kinds of stuff. Next, next picture, please. It's just a slightly bigger shot. So you can see the, oh all the, all the infrastructure is there. Next picture, please. Just the bus driver. So, I mean, like I said, the vehicles do date over about 100 years. Next picture, please. Again, just the front of one of the older buses. This is probably 1950s, this bus. Next picture, please. I like this sign, spitting prohibited. <laughs> did we lose, did we lose you, Ken? Yeah. Just, it just. I think your internet seems to be a little bit unstable mm -hmm. or something. Are people hearing Ken? Because I'm not hearing him. No. Keep talking. I'm able to, to listen to him. Next pick. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can no. hear you now. Brilliant. Thank you, so there'll be a, there'll just be a couple more. All the rest of the pictures are now from. So there's one of the steam engines again. You can just get on this. There's normally queues to get onto the steam engine because they're so popular. Um, it doesn't go very far, a couple of miles, and then comes back again. <laughs> <Ooh>. Sorry about <laughs> that. People are making noise in my kitchen. Next picture, please. Beware of the steamroller. Next picture, please. Again, this the, this little truck in the in the background is a steam truck, so it's actually steam which takes you back to about oof, the early 20s. Next picture, please. Again, 
another one of the uh, trolley buses, trams, I'm not quite sure. What... I think your audio is cutting out, Ken. Mm -hmm. I think that we're almost through all your pictures though. Mm -hmm. And one question while your audio is cut out. So somebody's asking, um, one question to think about is what are the most popular places to visit in, in um, England? That was one question that somebody had. But I'm just gonna scroll through your other pictures, Ken, because it seems that your audio is mm -hmm. somewhat um, unstable. And um, like I said, I think the, this is an awesome um, kind of museum. Let's see. And I think that. Oh, okay. Somebody's got the video on. So if you're what, if you have the YouTube video, make sure that you mute that. So that's the end of Ken's pictures. I'm going to stop sharing. And um, we had a couple others. I know that some people might, you know, been on for a while. So if you want to. If you have to leave and you can't stay on because I want everyone to have a chance to visit, that's fine. Visits, everyone to have a chance to share. So those of that have been on for the whole time, if you do not want to sit here for longer, you can stay or you can go. Uh, but um, I want the others that just came on to be able to share. Um, so we have Alex from Venezuela that, sh that came on. Um, and if you are ready to share. And then I also have Fatima that has um, popped on. Well, Fatima popped on first, so maybe if Fatima, you are ready to share. Um, and also, Yuri, you've been on for a really long time. I don't know if Yuri, if you want to share some pictures or not, because you were on since the beginning. So I might have you go first if you're ready. Hello, Michelle. How are you? Fatima, thank you so much. I'm just checking with Yuri because he was on since the beginning. I want to make sure if Yuri wants to share because he might um, he, he's been on for an hour and then I will have you go next. Um, Yuri, do you have, um, pictures, um, or things that you want to share about Kazakhstan? Oh, it seems I have a bad connection. Most oh. of the time I didn't see any one of you. Okay. All right. Well, I just want to give you a chance. If you have a bad connection, maybe we can try this again, but I want to make sure that you have a chance if you're, if you wanted to. Um, Okay, so if you have a bad connection, I'm going to have Fatima, if you are ready and you want to share um, pictures from Bangladesh, I have it so you can share your screen. Yes, of course, uh, Rishas, I would like to share some pictures. Those are our country's pictures, and it is an uh, ocean picture, so I would like to share it. Okay, you're all set to go. Yeah, and Fatima cool. is from Bangladesh. Hope you all are seeing the picture. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this place is yes. called Caucasus Bazaar, and it is famous place in our country. Uh, it is uh, situated uh, west side of our country. It is also a tourist place. So here you can uh, see the picture. A lot of people are visiting here. A lot of people are enjoying their time with their family, with their friends. So another picture is that I would like to share that about this place. Okay. Next one is that you can see here. Um, Como están ustedes? Kind of bueno. Maria. Maria, 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 Maria,
purpose of this class? Uh, there are plenty of uh, seafoods you can see. And the first one is pork uh, with uh, uh, biryani. It's called biryani with uh, potato uh, fry, French fry. Okay, you can say fr French fry. So it is a delicious food. So whether you're in that class. Another food is that uh, it is also famous here. And it is also um, street food. Okay, this kind of fish. Actually, it is a uh, look at it is an ocean. So there you will find out the plethora of uh, different kind of uh, plethora of fishes. And which is very famous in Cox's Bazaar. So people basically visit there to enjoy the ocean and enjoy the force of Cox's Bazaar. Okay, at the end, I would like to say that one uh, most interesting thing that people love to see there, which is sunset. This is the lovely scenery there which people enjoy a lot at the um, uh, afternoon times. That, that is so beautiful. Yes. Basically, people love this scenery and nobody uh, miss this scenery. If anyone go there, just stay at the end of the, end of the day that they, they can enjoy this scenery. They can take pictures because it, is, it, it seems very lovely. Okay, I didn't uh, take any more pictures to share with no, you. No, that, that's fine. Um, I love that here, I can only watch sunrises and have to get up super, super early to watch sunrises and sunsets are so much more beautiful because somebody told me that the, the air is warmer so you're gonna get more vibrant colors, but I have so many pictures. I get up super early at the beach when I'm there like 4.30, 5 o'clock in the morning to go and take pictures of sunrise. And I have no opportunity to take pictures of sunsets because I live on the East Coast. So thank you for sharing. That's awesome. Thank you. All right. So I have, let's see, um, Alex, you popped on. Um, are, do you have pictures from Venezuela to share? Yeah, first of all, greetings, everyone. I'm sorry if I was being late. Uh, I think I was a bit confused with the time. Uh, what time commenced the, the meeting? We, we started, we started um, well, we started at 1 p.m. GMT, but 8, 8 a.m. for me. So it was like an hour and 15 minutes ago, but that's okay because, um, you know, you can join now. We're still on. Okay, good. Uh, yes, I have, uh, I have already some pictures, some pictures from from Venezuela, a good, place, a very good place, uh, awesome place uh, in Venice, from Venezuela, a tourist place for sure. And but I, I'm not sure how can I share the. Mirror. Okay, so oh. let me talk you through it because I talked Fatima through it. Um, you should be able to swipe up from your phone, and you'll get a share screen option. Okay. okay. You should already have the pictures me... open, I think. Okay. Uh, so I'm preparing, I'm preparing the, that things until now. Yesterday was a busy day. Sorry. That's fine. I, uh, yeah, but I have, a, have, I'm ready to share the picture. Okay. Let me try to do my best. That's my fine. First like time, I... It's my first time because of you. It's where I say share, share. right? Not whiteboard, um, share screen. So screen, un okay. unshare because that's like where you can draw. I think if you want to draw us a picture of Venezuela or something. So I think you, you should me, have right? a share screen option. Mm -hmm. At the bottom. Fatima is I, a expert of this now. <laughs> I say mirror pantalla. No, hold on. I'm old. I'm sorry. I'm too old. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> you know, it's okay. I'm used to like, I'm a tech person for the computer version of Zoom, but I am not super, I don't know, versed on the mobile version of it. I had asked my daughter who's 11. Alex, I don't know if you are here. saying something. No, not yet. No, not yet. Not yet. Are you watching my, my horrible face, right? I see your beautiful <laughs> face. Oh my God. That's so kind of you. Thank you. You make me laugh. Hold on. Oh my God. Where am I? I say in the middle of my mirror, I can see compartir chair, right? I yes. press chair and I say, Isab Isabel. Isabel, could you please help me? Sí, you, me have to, you have to click uh, on, uh, tienes que darle al, en, al fondo, ¿vale? Abajo, tiene, tienes una opción que dice compartir pantalla. Exacto, aquí me sale share whiteboard. Tiene yes. que ser esa. Exacto. Tiene que ser, tiene que ser esa y uh, no sé. What about now? I'm trying to do it. I'm not the whiteboard. Share the pantalla. 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 Screen. Okay. If you share your screen, then we, we are going to be able to see what you are seeing in your phone. In your... All right. Yeah, that's better. What about now? It changed. Now something? I see you. No, we are, we... Yeah. What about now? I think you need to pick. So when you press share screen, mm -hmm. Um, you pick the different screen that you want. So it should be right now, you must have picked the screen looking at you. So if you pick the screen of your photos that you, so open up your photos that you want to share, then hit share screen. Mm -hmm. It's a little That's lesson of do. how to do, do this on, on a phone. That is what I do. I have uh, the picture on ready in the, other, in the other window and I press share and it, Rachel, if you want to explain to me something better, please speak Spanish. <laughs> uh, Isabel, I don't think you can't say that in Spanish. A ver, primero se me está diciendo que primero selecciones la, la foto que tú quieras compartir. Y una vez que la tengas seleccionada, le des a compartir pantalla. Entiendo. Mira, me sale chair whiteboard. Me sale cámara, pantalla, marcador. Dirección de sitio salir. web. Te tiene que salir. Foto, ceja. Ajá. Pues tienes que poner, si lo tienes en foto, tienes que decir compartir foto. ¿Compartir foto? Ok. Claro. Julio, deja de reírte, Julio. <laughs> All right. I don't know so... if Julio is over there. You can try to... Uh, put... Rachel, you can you can make it with other members and when I all right done, so um why them. don't why don't we pause and we can um you know if Ken is still there one of the questions that was um was asked was what are the most popular places to visit in in England I'm here can you hear me yes yes oh oh wow um, oh i see actually why don't we pause back and go back to sorry okay, we'll go okay. back to alex because i see his lovely screen of a beautiful waterfall yeah. so hold that thought Ken. all right uh, thank you thank you for to teach me now i'm learning one more things about zoom okay this mm -hmm. is the angel fall the angel falls that we have here in canaima park in, C in bolivar city uh is the reason why almost uh, millions of tourists came before this government uh, to visit, okay? Because this is the most high, uh, oldest stone in the world. We call it Tepui in, in idiomatic uh, indigenous, indigenous uh, names, mm -hmm. Tepui. And uh, it's, this is the highest waterfall in the world, almost one kilometer, mm -hmm. you know, highest. And Instagram, you can you can see if you type uh, the name of the waterfall Salto Angel, mm -hmm. uh, you can see many many pictures about the Angel Falls. Uh, yeah, it's the it's the highest in the world. You see? Mm -hmm. You see the second picture, right? No, the second. Um, one. I think. Oh, Only you need to then that. scroll to the next one. I think if you scroll to the next one, we'll see the next picture. If you just 
Ah, okay. Uh, so I have to do the same step every. Uh, yeah, um, you should be able to I just. To wanna share. I would just do that. Uh -huh. One by one, I have to do the same. The same. You uh, probably would be able to just swipe to the next picture, but maybe not. I don't know. I have to look into that. Okay. But we can okay. see it now. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah, this is another angle, another uh, area uh, by plane. You know, you you take this these pictures by plane. Many helicopter fly every day with tourists uh, to the Angel Four. Some some uh, a tourist business offered me that uh, kind of job. Uh, to work as a tourist with the German people, but I deny that uh, that offer because it's a bit dangerous. You know, fly every day or almost every weekend with a uh, Venezuelan helicopters. I think that 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 wasn't a good idea. You know, but are this you is a another pilot? area for tourists. What? Are you a helicopter pilot? No, no, no. Uh, the uh, tourist business, tourist, tourist oh, okay. companies invite me to work as a tourist guide because I was that was being my, I know, uh, one one kind of job that I had when I was being mm -hmm. living in Margarita. Mm -hmm. uh, that that picture is gorgeous. The yeah. colors. This are is the just... way, yeah, this is the way uh, of the for tourists. You know that you can you can arrive directly in the feet of the mountain with the engine for um yeah let me find more uh, also i have to select uh, all the pictures at the same time and then changing right i think oh, so i'm see. gonna have to look at what we should do sometime is we should zoom and practice doing this <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'm sorry uh this is uh tukakas tukakas is another uh, uh a beautiful area here in falcon beautiful beach you know remember that we are in from the caribbean sea the caribbean mm -hmm. sea is in the north so it's near of cuba dominican republic uh, mm -hmm. uh, aruba curacao you know all that uh, all the place but uh, if i have to do all the time the same things mm. Yeah, we have a lot of pictures. That picture is special for one more thing. Probably it's not the most, the most beautiful that I had in this trip. I take, I took that, that picture. Um, but the point of this picture is the Orinoco Delta and Orinoco River and the Caroni River. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. Orinoco and the Caroni Rivers has the names of Venezuelan in, indigenous uh, tribus. Tribus? Tribus? How do you say tribus, uh, Isabel, in English? Tri oh, tribus right? indigenous. Tribes. Right? Okay. Yeah. And the point is that it is both re rivers going down in the same way, you know, but they can they can mix, they can uh, mix, is correct? No se puede mezclar mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in this part of the area. Uh, and they have a, a interesting history about... Uh, uh, that both tribus, three tribes, are was in war in that moment, and the daughter of one, the Orinoco three tribes, and the the son of the of the Caroni tribes uh, were were in love, you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, <laughs> uh, how do you say? El jefe de la tribu, the chief, the chef of the tribes, they, they doesn't want that that they can get married, you know, mm -hmm. and they kill them. They kill both uh, those uh, uh, children, or yeah, they, they they kill them, you know, mm -hmm. don't get get married. So this is an interesting history. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm trying to find. Uh, now you can't see, you can't see, you only, are you watching my, mir my mirror or are you watching me? Wait, now we don't see anything yet. You have to share another picture. Okay, oh my God. I couldn't do that yesterday. Sorry about it. That's okay. It's everybody can learn. Learn. We can learn. We're learning everyone learning English, learning how to use the technology. 
Um, I, I had problems this morning, Alex, with the whole, um, I made this YouTube link and it didn't work. So I had to like, I had to pivot, although I think we're just saying that we should stop saying that, saying, we say it too much, but. Okay. okay. Uh, can you see this? this picture? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is uh, near of the Bolivar Peak. The Bolivar Peak is the highest peak in the mountain in, in Venezuela, uh, where you can touch the snow every year, you know, in the, in the year. Every year. Remember that we don't have the four season here. Uh, but in the peak, in this Bolivar Peak in Merida City, where I am living, mm -hmm. you can touch the snow. And we have the most highest telepheric in the world, too. You know, the more, no, no high, highest and longer, you know? Mm -hmm. And to arrive to this place where I am, this is, this, that is me some years ago, almost 10 years ago, that's me. Uh, yeah, look my hands and you can see my, uh, como se dice guantes? Gloves, gloves, right? Yeah, gloves. Gloves, yeah, thank you. You can see my, my gloves and this is a small lagoon or lake, but it's not a like a like lake. It's the rain, the rain deposit, you know, the water of the rain deposit mm -hmm. uh, into the mountain. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and this is in Merida City, the place where I am living. And but in this area, is is really cold. You know, it's re it was really uh, it's really cold. Mm -hmm. About Margarita Island. Um, pictures of our pictures and pictures any Caribbean Island, Caribbean Island, Margarita here. I found many, I have a lot of pictures, but I couldn't do it in my job as well before. I'm sad about it. I'm upset, sorry. Well, maybe we can have another talk sometime about places. Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. definitely, it sounds like a really good, um, a really good topic for sure. I know that Isabel said, oh, it's hard to talk about just one place in Spain. Mm -hmm. um, so we can do this topic again, maybe like, you know, maybe in a month. And um, so we can kind of like prepare for it and we can all practice sharing screens. Some of us have it down, but um, I think it would be a good topic to do again for sure. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know why uh, it's necessary to go to the to my document to found the picture and share it at the same time. I, I want to be I have I want to put all, for example, all the information that I want to share uh, at the same time, you know, why I have to go to my photos and select someone and then do it again? Yeah, I, I think um, we can talk about better ways to do it next time. Um, like some better ways, even myself, like it can seem to have the best way using Flickr. I was using Google Photos, which I thought was great, but I like how Ken could put them in order of how he wanted to share them. So I might actually use that. Okay, Montreal Airport. No, no, sorry, sorry. Now, now I was confused, oh. uh, you know. Okay, so in any case, um, there's probably better ways that we can do it. Um, and we can probably do this again, like next month. And I'm kind of thinking the next topic, I was thinking about um, maybe we could talk about our work. Like that could be a good topic because we all have different jobs. If Fatima, you're a student, so you could talk about being a student. But... Um, like myself, I work in a high school. Ken's a videographer. Isabel, I'm not sure what you do at all. You teach English? Yes. Oh, okay. Alex is a dance um, dance instructor, a dancer, and used to be a tour guide. Um, so we all have very interesting things that we can talk about. And that's a good thing to learn how to talk about in English. Because that's, a, right, if you're going to talk to people, you want to tell them about your job. So I was thinking that might be the next topic that we could do. Um, I think everyone, uh, unfortunately, Yuri had to, had bad internet connection, uh, but he ended up having to pop off that. Timo, are you asking me a question? Yes, he was saying that next time we'll talk about our profession. So is there, we should uh, uh, share any picture? You can share pictures if you want, or you can just talk. 
Um, if you have pictures to share, sure, you can prepare that. But if you want to just talk, I know Alex is a dance teacher, so he could show pictures or or even video um, if you want. I'm a, I work in a school, so I might show pictures of the school and um, some pictures. I have to be careful about showing pictures of students, but if I have pictures that have already been shared in their social media, I can figure that out. But um, you know, we can all talk and share pictures or not. We can just talk or we can talk and share pictures because I think pictures are a great way to kind of help kind of tell your story. Um, so if it makes sense, definitely. And Alex, we're seeing lovely your lovely street there again. So thanks for sharing that. Uh, but I think um, I think that will be the next topic. I was kind of thinking about what the next topic, and I kind of think topics that are really good that you that you would need, like talking about your job is or your work or whatever, is a good topic. So um, it's been great, and I love seeing everyone's pictures. We had a couple technical difficulties, but that's to be expected, I think. Okay, thank okay, you. Okay, so I don't want to leave the video call. Uh, well, uh, you know what? We don't have to. You can stay on longer, Alex. I'm going to end the YouTube live, but we can stay on longer and chat if you want. But anybody else that's been on for a really long time that wants to go, but I'll stay on for another 50 minutes since you just. Oh, look at the kitty. Um, I'm going to. They're looking for some food, I guess. <laughs> Always. All right. So I'm going to end the YouTube live. And um, as soon as I figure out how to do that. Okay. What I want to see to say is, is because the sun shine in this moment, you know, all the time is, is cloudy here. And I want to just uh, show you this part of the mountain near mm -hmm. where I am living. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm around the mountain. All that you can see. Oh. Uh, okay. Yeah, it's the area where I am living, the, the street where I am living, you know, and m many different banana trees. So if you are poor, if you are poor, many people, many people can help you with bananas here in my country, you know, because in everywhere, many people uh, produce bananas, you know? Uh -huh. And yeah, that is a, it's a good way to share the food here in, my, in this area with bananas all right well that's no. thank you for What's sharing up? that that's very interesting <laughs> all right yeah. i'm i'm going to end the live and if anybody wants to stay on for another 15 minutes and chat uh, but i'm going to stop streaming